Yo, what's going on, guys? Crispy Flakes here. So, with the draft lottery happening, um, I wanted to take a minute to go through an article right here going over the top 100 prospects for the NBA draft. Of course, I'm not going to go through each and every single one of them because that's so many, but I'm probably going to do like the top 30 players, you know, guys that would expect to, uh, to go in the first round of the 2018 NBA draft because I know a lot of these guys I do know about, but at the same time, there's a lot I do not really know about because nobody watches every single college basketball team. There's just so much great talent out there. So here we go, guys. Uh, we are going to go through the top 30 draft picks for the 2018 NBA draft, or at least the top 30 ranked players. And here we go. Um, so here we go, man. The number we have is DeAndre Ayan, center for Arizona. He was a freshman, of course. It says he has elite physical tools, soft touch at the rim, and a promising jump shot, making him the likely top pick. He is seven foot, two hundred and sixty pounds. Um, for this college season, averaged twenty points, twelve rebounds, and two blocks per game. Now, I know a lot of people telling me about this dude said that he's kind of going to be like the next like Joel Embiid of this draft class. So if he's like that, I mean that's definitely a player that you want to take a chance on. As far as him going to a team, I'd love to see him on a team like the Phoenix Suns, just because I feel like him and Devin Booker could be something nice out there, or maybe even the Chicago Bulls with with uh, him and Laurie Marketing and all of a sudden you have a really nice front court to kind of build on going into the future. Uh, next up, we got uh, Luka Doncic from Real Madrid. So, Luka Doncic, 6'8", 220, age 19. Uh, for in, in the season or the uh, league that he played in, he averaged 15 points, 5 rebounds, and 4.4 assists per game. Says he's a prodigious playmaker and basketball savant. Uh, Doncic will be the most accomplished player in the draft, bar none. Okay, so... I don't know, man. When, when it comes to the Euro players, they are usually either, like, really hit or really miss. I mean, there's really, not, like, no in-between. Sometimes you got, like, some pretty good role players, I guess, that are there. But if you're taking this dude number two in the draft in a very deep uh, NBA draft class, you definitely hope that he does work out. Um, I know a lot of people are saying that he might actually play the point guard posi position. So, at 6'8", if he can do that, I mean, that's going to be a big asset because we are kind of going into that realm of the NBA where, um... You know, you have really tall playmakers on team, like your Ben Simmons, your Giannis, LeBron James, you know, guys like that. So, I, I don't know what this dude is as far as, as a shooter. Like, is he a good jump shooter? If somebody can let me know in the comment section below, it would be great uh, to hear about. But, yeah, so Luka Doncic, I think he'd definitely be a very solid NBA player. I'm just curious how quick it's going to happen. Because, at being 19, it's like, do you think that something's going to happen right away? Or do you think it's going to take a few seasons? Uh, next up, we have Jaron Jackson Jr. He was a center for Michigan State, and he's entering the NBA draft after his freshman season. Averaged 11 points, 6 rebounds, and 3 blocks per game, uh, being 6'11", 240, age 18. With a proje projectable frame, above average mobility, and a fast developing skill set, Jackson put up his considerable potential on uh, display this season and played his way among the NBA's top prospects. So what I do like about him, seems like he is pretty athletic out there. And the, the fact that he got three blocks per game, I mean, that just means he has a feel for blocking the ball. So that's something that, that cannot always be taught. That sometimes it's just an instinct like instilled in certain NBA players. Because let's be honest, like every player in the NBA is pretty much tall. So they should be able to block shots, right? Well, the fact that he actually did that um, shows a lot about him. Now, six rebounds per game, that's something you can be a little nervous about. Um, 6'11 at the 11 points per game. I think if I remember correctly, like he's an okay three-point shooter. So he might actually find himself uh, being like a stretch four in the NBA. And I'm, I'm not, I don't really want to say a stretch four, but a guy that plays for who can happen to, uh, you know, knock down some three-pointers every now and then. His athleticism is really uh, what are going to carry him right here. But definitely going to have to work on his rebound if he wants to play like center in the NBA. So that's something he can definitely, you know, improve on. But uh, 240, 6'11 at the age of 18. This dude might actually grow to be seven foot tall. So watch out NBA. Uh, next up, we have Marvin Bagley the third from Duke. So this is the guy that going into the college season I was the most hyped about. Um, but it seems like he fell off a, a little bit. I mean, I still think he'll be pretty solid in the NBA. It says he's an athletic, competitive presence on the inside. Bagley was one of the college's basketball's most productive players, utilizes the athletic mismatch to score in the paint, and he manufactured easy baskets on the offense glass at an elite clip. So 6'11, 235. Uh, what, 21 points per game, 11 rebounds, 61% field goal percentage. The thing about him is I don't know how he'll be as far as playing, uh, you know, like defense in the NBA at the five spot. Because I, I see him more as a five, like in this era of the NBA. Now, I know his natural position is the power forward position. So if he can really up his shooting, then yes, he can definitely play that. Uh, I'm curious how quick he is as a player, just because like, you know, in the, in the NBA, the speed is so different. It's not so much you can just be... Uh, just bigger than everybody. You also got to be quicker than everybody, too, to really dominate out there. So, I like the idea of him in a small ball lineup as the center. Um, hopefully, he can do things as far as, like, passing and stuff like that. So, he's not much of a shot blocker. So, defense is not always about shot blocking, though. So, if he can put a body on a guy, and the fact that he is 6'11", 235, means that he got some body to put on him, right? 
Uh, next up, we have Mohamed Bamba, the center from Texas. So, I've seen a lot of big guys so far, it seems like, early in this NBA draft, which is kind of crazy to think about because the NBA is so much more of a guard oriented league now or an elite small forward. But yeah, Mohamed Bamba. Um, it says Bamba boasts rare length and verticality that translates to serious defensive impact. He has a 7'9 wingspan. That is absolutely crazy. So yeah, 7'2", 25, uh, 13 points per game, love rebounds, and almost four blocks per game. Damn, dude, that looks that, that that sounds pretty dangerous right there. So if anything, you know, if the scoring doesn't come along right away, which sometimes it does, but that the fact that he has a 7'9 wingspan, um, we might see ourselves with the next Rudy Gobert on this team, guys. That's kind of what I'm seeing with him is the next Rudy Gobert. So the rebounding and shot blocking, that's something he should always be able to do. So even if he is like a bust to some extent, um, you know, good shot blockers and rebounders are always needed in the NBA. Hopefully he can bring that 13 points per game on there too, though, because you gotta be able to score in this NBA to stay on that basketball court. All right, next up, we got Michael Porter, who has actually uh, missed his college season due to injury. So it says the long-term state of Porter's back remains a, a matter of concern, but he's still one of the most polished scorers in the draft. So for the 2016 U18 FIBA Americas, okay, uh, 16 points, 7 rebounds, and 2 assists per game. So that's when he was, like, well, like roughly like 17 or 18 years of age. Um, definitely taking a risk right here, not due to his, not only to his injury, but also to the fact that we have not seen this guy play at the college level. So I do think he'll be pretty solid out there. Uh, don't be surprised though that if this guy, you know, comes to an NBA team and is not good for a few seasons, he just needs to have a few, you know, play against that top talent for a bit. I think he will spend some time in the G League. I think that's a good way to go with him. But who knows, man? Maybe he comes in the NBA. He's just like a freaking beast. He should have been the number one pick and just takes over. So definitely looking forward to see what Michael Porter Jr. can bring to an NBA team. Looks like he's a forward at 6'10". Um, Ayer's a pretty good three-point shooter. So he can definitely play, you know, the three or the four spot. All right, next up, we have Wendell Carter Jr. Um, another center for the Duke Blue Devils right there. So he played alongside Marvin Bagley, which also makes will probably make his stats even more impressive. It says... Carter was a productive, stabilizing force for Duke this season and is viewed as a safe bet to play in the NBA for a long time as a well-rounded post player. So he's got the post game for him. Um, average, what, 14 points, 9 rebounds, and 2 blocks per game. Uh, 6'10", 260, age 19. Okay, so the post game is kind of dying in the NBA a little bit, so I do hope that he can score in some other ways. Uh, sexy, it looks like down here he does have a respectable jump shot, so that will be nice in pick and pop situations. But yeah, the fact, once again, guys, the fact that he can do the shot blocking, um... But you also got to think about, too, he did play alongside Marvin Bagley, who was also just as dominant. So you, you got to think about if, you know, in the back of your mind, if that kind of contributed to how dominant of stats this dude did have due to that. Because, you know, you might have teams worrying about Marvin Bagley, so that allows Wendell Carr to do some extra things out there. I don't think that's the case. I actually have seen this dude play. I think he's really solid. So just something to think about, though. Okay, next up, we got Trey Young. Perhaps the most, like, I don't want to say hyped up player, but the most, the, the player that probably got, like, the most publicity this NBA season uh, due to his Curry-like style of play out there. So, for the NBA season, or for this uh, college season, I should say, he averaged 27 points, 9 assists, 36% field goal percentage. Now, some of his shots uh, were kind of chuckers up there, so he definitely needs to work on that. But it says he's a potent perimeter shooter and playmaker. Young displayed and sustained serious ability as the fulcrum of Oklahoma's defense. Okay, so the fact that he's 6'2", uh, means that he has like NBA point guard height. It's all going to come down to him if he can go out there and actually run an offense and not just be a chucker because it's easy to pad your stats but have low field goal percentages out there. Um, the fact that he does have the playmaking abilities will help him out a lot too. It's just going to come down to his basketball IQ. And you know, going into an NBA team knowing that there are guys that have been in the league for a lot longer than him. So it's not going to be his team right away. He's going to have to earn the respect of the people around him. Our next up, we have Mikael Bridges, uh, small forward from Villanova. He was a junior, so he's 6'7", 210, age 21 for his NBA, or I can't even say NBA season, man. I'm so used to doing NBA stuff. Um, he averaged 18 points, 5 rebounds, and shot 44% from 3. That is unbelievable, man. That is like, that's elite 3-point shooting right there. And that 3-point that shot don't go nowhere. Like, that's going to translate nicely to the NBA. It says Bridges... Uh, Couples great defensive instinct and ability with quality three-point shooting, making him a fairly safe bet to provide value in the modern NBA. Um, since he's got seven full wingspan, so the fact that he's doing that in the small forward position and can knock down those three-pointers, uh, this dude looking like a freaking set in stone three and D player in the NBA. And that's the thing, guys. It's like Mikel Bridges, that's the type of player you want to take because that is low risk. This dude's gonna be good. I can already tell, man. I can already tell by his play style. All right, next up, we have Robert Williams, the center, or Robert Williams the third. I'm sorry, the center for Texas A&M. He was a sophomore, uh, 6'9", so he averaged 10 points, 9 rebounds, and 2.6 blocks per game. 
Okay, so y'all know I'm a Pistons fan, so uh, the fact that, you know, I, I can't say he's 6'9 and going to be undersized. Come on, man, Big Ben Wallace. But it says he's a physical force when he's engaged. Williams can be a defensive making rebounder and finisher around the rim, but has struggled to produce big numbers on a consistent basis. All right, so uh, I, I'm, I'm not trying to say this. I'm not trying to write this dude off nothing like that. But based off his stats and his height and everything like that, I'm kind of getting Bismack Biombo vibes from him. Uh, hopefully, he can be more than that. Now, I know there's going to be guys in the comments saying, yo, man, Robert Williams, you don't know nothing about him, bro. Like, that dude going to be a freaking superstar. I mean, that's that's what everybody's always said about any player that's been the been a bust in the NBA. It's like, yeah, this dude's going to be a beast. He's going to be a bust. I'm just saying my first initial instincts about this man. Uh, next up, we have Miles Bridges. So, he actually, I, I don't know if it was due to um, just like the tournament or anything like that, but this dude I thought was going to be more of a higher pick in this draft or a higher ranked player, I should say. So, Miles Bridges, uh, 6'7", 225, age 20. Um, so, he averaged 17 points, 7 rebounds, and shot about 36% from 3 for the Michigan State Spartans. So, Bridges is a well-built, active scorer who might be a little bit uh, stuck between positions. Yeah, you definitely hate that. Now, I will say, though, what other player is 6'7 that was stuck between positions that went to Michigan State? Draymond Green, man. Draymond Green. So, is Milo Bridges going to be a starter? I think he definitely has that capabilities, especially if he can score the basketball. Uh, you do kind of hope that he maybe grows another inch or two just to like 6'8, 6'9. Then all of a sudden you are in the realm of like the Rudy Gays out there. And I think he can definitely be that type of player, the guy that can get to the basket but also knock down the shots. So, uh, I, I definitely think there's going to be a nice place in the NBA for Miles Bridges. It seems like Michigan State players, for the most part, always you know, at least find himself as a role player, if not, maybe some sort of star in the NBA. So, we'll see how that goes. All right, next up, we have Kevin Knox, a forward for Kentucky. He was a freshman, 6'9", 215, averaged 16 points, 5 rebounds, shot 34% uh, from 3. So, the fact that he's 6'9", probably plays some pretty good defense, right? Says he's an intriguing prospect with the, uh, with the ability to handle either forward spot. That's always nice. Anytime you can be multi- uh, functional, it's going to be an asset to your NBA squad, because that means there's going to be minutes for you to be play out there. It's just you know, your job to go out there and make the most out of them. It says Knox was never consistently able to take over games at Kentucky, but it has the ability to develop into a capable supporting scorer in due time, which is fine. NBA teams need those type of players. You need guys that know their role. If every single one of these guys came into the NBA and was like, yo, I'm going to be the superstar scorer. Well, that's not going to work all the time. So if you're one of these late lottery teams that barely make you know, or barely miss the playoffs um then all of a sudden you get yourself another really solid role player in kevin knox that's the perfect situation for you out there all right next up we have colin sexton so i think of colin sexton i think that I, I believe it was that one game this season we played like three on five basketball which is absolutely crazy but yes six two uh 190 pounds um he averaged 19 points about three four assists uh, the three-point percentage for the point guard uh, for the point guard position is a little bit low i would like to see him get that more to like the 37 percent range but it says there's no doubting Sexton's talent as a scorer. At Alabama, he showcased his ability to take the basket, play through contact, and fill up the box score. Sounds like he's pretty athletic too out there. Um, I definitely see Sexton maybe starting his career as a backup point guard. You know, if he can really prove himself um, in a few NBA seasons, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if an NBA team gave the reins of the team over to him. So we'll see how that all goes. He is a good scorer though. Just I want to see that three-point percentage go up a little bit. You just need to have it be like that for the NBA. All right, here we got a shy. Galaugus Alexander. I probably pronounced that completely wrong. I, I know I know how to say it because I said it right before, but I forgot. Yes, he is 6'6. Six, six. So this dude's got some freaking height to him, man. 14 points per game, five assists, and 1.6 steal uh, steals per game. It says Alexander is one of the quickest studies in college basketball this year. He bordered on timid in November and finished as one of the most productive point guards in the country, which is something that an NBA scout needs to know going into this draft and a GM that is going to select him is that you have these players that no doubt were the top of their class any, like every single time they uh, stepped on a basketball court. Um, but it took some time in college to get things going, eventually figure it out. So he needs to have that same mindset going into the NBA. That it's going to take time for him to figure things out, probably even longer than it did in college. So don't lose confidence too quickly. You know, you got six, you're 6'6", six, six, man. That height is going to be so freaking amazing for an NBA team out there at the point guard position. Especially you got to stop like Ben Simmons and players like that. Our next up, we have Lonnie Walker the fourth. I think it's the fourth, right? Uh, 6'4". He went to Miami, by the way. He was shooting guard. 6'4", 190 pounds, 12 points, 41.5 field goal percentage, and about 35% from three. So that's okay. Definitely some things to work on right there. Since he's, he's an athletic slashing two guard. Um, you know, so being so being 6'4", not quite sure what his defense is like. But, you know, if he can slash like that, being uh, a little bit shorter and stuff like that. I don't want to say shorter, but for the shooting guard position, you typically want guys that are like 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, around that. 
uh, height. Um, kind of getting maybe some Avery Bradley vibes right here. If you can really work on that defense, that's kind of what I'm thinking about. But also, Avery Bradley is a very nice slasher um, at the shooting guard position. So I'm kind of getting that right there. It also says he's recovering from a summer meniscus tear. I don't think that's that big a deal. I mean, yeah, they'll suck and everything. And it could lead to something else down the road. But I don't think it's that huge a risk. Okay, next up, we got Mitchell Robinson, uh, center for uh, Chalmette High School. Wait, high school? Dude from high school, man? Yo, did he miss a season or something like that? Oh, I don't know. It says, although Robinson will have a, had a year off from competitive basketball under his draft with no experience beyond high school, his long built, impressive athletic ability and shot blocking skills come with a built in NBA intrigue. So, in high school, take this with a grain of salt, guys. Seriously, man. Grain of salt here 26 points, 12 rebounds, and 6 blocks per game. Ugh. I'll tell you, if you guys, if somebody drafts this man, y'all better just give him some time in that G League because, yeah, that's, you don't go from high school to play in the NBA and be productive right away unless you are like Kevin Garnett or LeBron James, not Kwame Brown. Not, don't be, don't be Kwame Brown, Mitchell. Please don't. All right, next up, we have a freshman, Jer Smith. He is a guard slash forward for Texas Tech. 6'5", 195, uh, fourth last season. He did average 11 points, five rebounds, and 55.6 field goal percentage okay so being another freshman right there the scoring you know guys like this you, you almost feel like could have went into college for another season and maybe um i don't know it would have helped this game out a lot because those are those are good freshman numbers those are great freshman numbers those are not really great numbers to go off of based off the nba draft but it does seem like you know i, I do love the 56 percent field goal percentage it means i take smart shots um which is really great you know the fact that he is a freshman and very young and has that mindset it says smith is one of the surprise stories of this draft beginning his freshman year as an as an unheralded curiosity and finished as a key player for an elite eight team with enough raw athletic ability to warrant first round consideration and entering the agent or the draft with an agent but yeah okay we'll see how it goes all right we're gonna go kind of quickly through the rest of these guys right here man we got troy Bow, uh, brown from oregon he is a freshman six seven Average 11 points, 6 rebounds, 3 assists per game. Blending size, ball handling ability, and an uns unselfish game. 6'7", great height for a guard out there anyway. Brown is an intriguing prospect given the increasingly positionless nature of the NBA game. Uh, he's unlikely to lead your team in scoring. Yeah, once you get in this range, you're starting to look more into role players. But also, you know, every now and then you get one of these guys that come out of nowhere and just become like a really solid NBA player. So, you don't ever want to sleep on these guys. They're definitely uh, warrant looking into even more than just saying okay we're gonna get this guy to be a glue player for our team no man these dudes want to be stars too i'm gonna butcher this name guys i'm gonna say it's zanon but the d might not be sound so it might be Zanan. but not i don't know man design i don't know bro we got uh musa design from oh my god from kk sadavita okay he's six nine um 12 points per game three rebounds 40 uh eight percent field goal percentage it looks like that's an all competition it says musa is a score first wing who hangs his hat on pull-up jumpers in a crafty game all right this boy sounds like a one-on-one -on -one player man so we'll see how that goes for him right next up we got uh anferne simmons from he was a this dude also miss like, what's all these dudes in colleges and stuff like that man at finishing his prep year at img and opting to forgo college for the draft Simmons appears set to wide a wave of mystery into a guaranteed contract. Uh, so yeah, 6'3", looks like for, for the 2017 Under Armour Association, 15 points, 41.4 three-point percentage. So that's that's promising right there. Um, I, I don't like him missing college, but you know, some some players just college is not for them. You know, especially uh, these days because college is kind of corrupt and stuff like that. But that's probably a video for another time. It says he will likely see the G League next year. Probably a good move. All right, next up we got Aaron Holiday uh 6-1 he is 21 okay so he averaged about 20 points six assists 43 percent from three so we are looking at ourselves a very nice scoring point right here but also knows how to make some the passes out there um sort of game maybe some jeff teague vibes is kind of what i'm seeing with him maybe jeff t back on the atlanta hawks though right holiday impressed this season with steady performance as an outside uh, shooter and primary facilitator and looks suited for a backup point guard role in the nba teams need that we got Bruno Fernando from Maryland. He was a center 6'10", 10, 10 points, 7 rebounds, and 1.2 blocks per game. You also got to keep in mind, when you look at these guys' height and weight, um, that's at the age of 19. This man still might be growing, dude, so he might hit 7 foot. One of the most athletic bigs in college basketball. That's good. Maybe we got ourselves a nice little uh, DeAndre Jordan right here. Although, the fact that you are um, athletic and you only got 6.5 rebounds in the college setting, that's something to think about. 7'4 wingspan. You definitely teach rebounding, though, at times. We got Kyrie Thomas shooting guard from Creighton. 
uh 6 3 2 10 15 points 1.7 steals per game once again another great three-point shooter says although he doesn't possess starry upside thomas is one of college basketball's top perimeter stop oh he's also a freaking defender okay I, I like this dude already man um although I, I don't like the height again it's just i gotta stop saying that though because you can be a good defender at 6 3 in the nba you just you, you gotta be passionate about it i mean you can't there's guys in the nba that are good defenders because of their body and then there's guys that are good at defense because of the mindset so hopefully he has that going into it um 24th we have jante porter from missouri is he related to michael porter okay yes his younger brother okay that's pretty cool uh forward slash center 6 11 2 40 10 points seven rebounds and two assists per game guys wouldn't that be absolutely crazy if like michael porter was an absolute bust but jante porter was just like an absolute beast i, would, I don't just, nobody would really see that coming right okay we got we're like Alkins from arizona 6 5 2 20 13 points five rebounds 36 percent from three another guard out there 6 5 it looks like he's a jack of all trades does a little bit of everything out there i love the rebounding from the uh, 6 5 player we got chandler hutchins um from boise say he's 6 7 20 point per game score eight rebounds four assists he seems like he's a little low on this list man those are some pretty solid numbers right there offering a nice mix of size athleticism and production uh we got jerome robinson from boston college he's a junior six four looks like he's a guard 21 points three assists 41 percent from three a high scoring guard with nice degree of shake to his game we got bruce brown jr from miami six five another guard out there so we could definitely guard heavy later on in this draft 11 points eight rebounds and four assists per game athleticism frame and defensive minded approach uh jalen brunson this was this dude won so many freaking awards and stuff guys um the fact that he's 29 it's like why he's also yeah how is this dude so low like this dude was a freaking beast man just saying um although the critiques of brunson's average size and athleticism as they pertain to his upside are fair the leader of villanova's title team checks basically every other box i mean 63190 yeah you don't gotta be mr muscles out there these days if you can slow things down run an offense with your mind uh you'll be fine out there you got maybe defensively struggles a little bit but there's plenty of point guards that do that right i think this dude will be just fine and finally we have DeAnthony melton guard from usc 6-4 uh in the 2016-2017 nba season eight points four rebounds two steals per game so definitely looking like more of a prospect out there than anything missed this season due to usc's prolonged investigation to his eligibility um so yeah not too much to say about him guys but anyway man let me know in the comment section below your analysis of some of these players out there maybe players i forgot about maybe guys that might go in the second round thank you all so much for watching and peace out my friends